And we're live. Welcome, students. Summer 2020 Virtual Melt University. I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, CEO of Melt. And this, believe it or not, is our week three, third week of Melt University. Uh, first of all, I want to thank every one of you for participating, tuning in today. Uh, the podcasts have been amazing. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the, the, our guest, but your, the, your participation has been amazing. Your feedback's been amazing. Your sharing uh, on social media has been amazing. Uh, us helping, you helping us sign up other students has been amazing. Uh, and it's really, really gratifying, you know, in all these crazy times that we're in uh, to be able uh, to help. So I appreciate all the kind comments, appreciate the support, participation. Um, got a great day today. We're going to teach chapter two uh, of the forthcoming book, Brand You, coming out. College is the ultimate professional lab. You're really going to, going to take a lot of notes out of this. Uh, when you get back this fall, obviously it's going to be a little different, but the opportunities actually won't be different. They're actually going to be more opportunities, and we're going to talk about some of the comments that uh, Texas A&M Athletic Director Ross Bjork has made about new opportunities. Uh, you're going to hear from Greg McGarity, the Athletic Director of the University of Georgia, new opportunities for you uh, on the college campus. But before uh, we dive in uh, to our session today, uh, we started a new, new little thing this week with Melt University and Lunch and Learn, where we're going to highlight two successful Melt U uh, former interns, graduates, and very, very um, successful uh, rising professionals in the world. And two of my favorite, favorite, not only interns, uh, they were great success stories um, at Melt. Uh, we only hire entry-level employees from uh, participants in Melt University. So you might want to take note of that uh, as you complete your summer course in Melt University. You build that into your resume. You apply for jobs here and other places uh, because the people we're connecting you to on the podcast as well as myself, uh, we only hire uh, from the intern pool. So that's important to note as well. But Claire Ellender, um, a 2014 graduate of Clemson University, Atlanta native, um, came to us through some uh, some recommendations. You all know a lot of word of mouth, a lot of friends of family, uh, a lot of people I know from your university, your parents. And so I get a call from uh, a fellow one day and he said, hey, I, I, I've never recommended anybody to you, but I want to recommend a very special person to you, Claire Ellender. And so, you know, it was really like, literally like I, the, the subtitle of the book, you had me a hello. Uh, Claire came in very polished, very buttoned up, um, and uh, made eye contact, was prepared, knew all about this organization, knew all about me. And I said, you know, hey, we want you in the program. And if you complete the program, complete the requirements, uh, really show us what you got, you'll move into um, a full-time role here. And so I'm, 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 I'm really proud of Claire, tremendous accomplishments. She uh, spent four years, we spent four years in the trenches together, producing major league meetings at the Coca-Cola Company, college game day, um, final four, many, many other things. And in fact, she did so well that the Coca-Cola Company, whom you know we do a lot of work with, they called me one day and they go, and they've never done this before, and they go, um, about that Claire Ellender, uh, we'd like to bring her over. And uh, I said, wow, that's a, that's a very, very flattering, very high compliment that somebody that has been within my organization had impressed you enough to want to go to work for Coca-Cola. So now Claire um, is at the Coca-Cola company and is a rising star over there as well. So look up Claire Ellender on LinkedIn. She's very, very active on LinkedIn and social media. Um, seek career advice and guidance from her. She, if you want to go to work over at the Coca-Cola company, she can be a Sherpa or guardian angel uh, for you uh, as well. So big shout out to, uh, to Claire Ellender today and all of our students who are participating from uh, Clemson University. We love that university and we've had some great kids from there. Claire Miller, it's double Claire day. Um, went to the University of Georgia and here's a, here's a funny story talking about word of mouth. And so uh, I got a call from um, a gentleman who's a dear friend of mine. 
And when I get calls from people whom I respect and whom I have a great relationship with, I always respond to those calls um, because they wouldn't go out on a limb for an individual uh, and recommend them if they didn't think very highly of them themselves. And so um, he said, hey, this is a, a friend of mine. His daughter uh, is a really, really sharp um, young lady from the University of Georgia. Uh, she had finished up in 2016, Claire Miller had. Uh, she came in, same story, brought the heat, buttoned up, brought her A-game, resume, portfolio, research smell, research me, look me in the eye, defined as we're hearing in, that, in these podcasts, what value can you deliver to the organization? What value can you bring to Mel? And, and so those are the things that are standing out uh, from, uh, from, the, uh, from the people who, that are interviewing, who stand out, who get jobs here. And so Claire um, went through our program and you can tell when the students kind of stand out, you know, they're, they're getting in and early, uh, they're bringing the A game, they're volunteering to do anything they stay a little later and those types of things. And so um, she was with us for nearly four years and she did so well that the Home Depot, another small little organization based here in Atlanta, um, they picked her off and, and she's a rising star at the Home Depot organization. And so it's very, it's very, first of all, it, it gives me great satisfaction that I was able to bring them into the intern program. It gives me even greater satisfaction that I was able to give them their first start and even greater satisfaction that some of the most vaunted companies in the world uh, would want to have our, you know, former interns and former employees coming out of the mailed organization. And so a couple little nuggets of advice that, um, that Claire uh, Ellender and Miller said, you can never network enough. And one of the big things that we're doing this summer is we're trying to create a professional network for you. The Jeff Cottrell's of the world, the Adam White's of the world of, of front office sports, the Greg McGarity's of the world, the Ross Bjork's of the world. We're trying to create a professional network for you. The Tra I've heard a lot of great comments from the Tracy Wolfson interview. One of the most successful broadcasters in the country, NFL, CBS, Sideline. These are invaluable people, and they want to help you. So uh, Claire says you can never network enough. Um, explore opportunities that are scary. We've talked about skinning your knees. Uh, the only failure is the failure to try and those types of things. So dive in that deep end. Get on that saddle. You're going to fall off. Claire, I'll let her go the extra mile. Don't be afraid to ask for help. No bad ideas. And then so we've got a great lineup of podcasts coming up this week. Jeff Cottrell, obviously one of the greatest marketing gurus in the country. Coca-Cola, Converse, Starbucks. Uh, we had a fascinating conversation about music. Taylor Bloom, one of the one of the publications, Sport Techie, that I think you should be subbing to and following, uh, as well as Adam White from Front Office Sports, Jason Belzer from D1.Ticker. Uh, I had a nice little shout out in Sports Business Journal. Mel, you did as well. Share that with your friends. We're going to be having Michael Smith on later uh, in the summer. Tomorrow, tremendous podcast, Tia Cummings, who's the CMO of Walker and Company. You should follow Walker and Company. They make a tremendous product, hair care, health and beauty called Bevel, and Ty Vota, who is in the head of all international relations for the PGA Tour. So if you want a um, career in the professional golf world, there's not a better person than Ty uh, Vota as well and we've got some tremendous ones in the in the pike we've got mark chardy you should look him up c-i-a-r-d-i -I. uh one of the most prolific hollywood sports producers in the country secretariat rookie million dollar arm miracle um he's got another great movie coming out uh with the clemson university football player jim cavale uh founder of influencer podcast coming up on that jim dinkins president of coca-cola greg mcgarity uh, UGA athletic director, Seth Freeman, uh, marketing guru, former CEO, CMO of Buffalo Wild Wings, Katie Bain, uh, whose you know, son Sammy's uh, helping us this summer, student at SMU, like my own son, uh, was president of Coca-Cola. Craig Silver, who puts the ball games on that you see on CBS SEC. Hopefully we'll see that uh, this fall. Robert Irvine, whom you may know as a famous show on Food Network, Restaurant Impossible, going to talk about careers in food and culinary marketing. David McKillops, who ran Six Flags for many years, ran DC Comics for many years, is the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese now. He's going to talk about careers in, in food and hospitality. 
Tim Zulowski, head of all revenue for the Arthur Blank companies, which includes the Falcons and Atlanta United. Shannon Watkins, uh, the head of marketing for Athlac. Athlac, our famous, uh, our famous duck, our famous client. You may have seen the Nick Saban spots. Steve Phelps, president of NASCAR. Going to talk about careers in uh, in in, uh, in auto racing. So. Uh, we've got a tremendous lineup coming up, and I'm, uh, we got Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, and so uh, William White, CMO of Walmart. Um, we've got Jenny, who is the CEO of Top Golf. So we're going to cover a lot of professional ground. We're going to cover a lot of professional inspiration, and hopefully a lot of great professional um, networking opportunities for you. So don't forget share all your podcast on social media. Uh, with your friends and your professors, your career counselors. We're going to continue to build momentum from this program. We're going to continue the program even after you complete your requirements in July because we really want to um, uh, continue to help you network. It's going to be a brutal job market post-COVID. I want to come to your campus, visit with you. I want to share the book. Uh, we're going to talk about the book. Uh, obviously, today we're going to teach from the chapter and then um, you know, tag melt in your followings uh, as well, because the more students that we're able to get into our program, the more people that we're uh, going to be um, able to help. And, and that's why, you know, we're all here, my team, the MELT team, um, who have dedicated, you know, their jobs and their summers uh, and all of this craziness that we're in is, is helping out as well. So big shout out uh, to our tremendous MELT team and a big shout out to all the guests and a big shout out to you uh, who is really providing the valuable inspiration and feedback for this program. So I'm going to take a uh, little drink of my Diet Coke shameless product plug here. We are going to dive in to chapter two of the forthcoming book, Building Brand New how to win that successful, how, what successful job seekers do in a post-COVID world. As we've talked about in these Lunch and Learns, as we've talked about in the podcast, uh, the entry-level job world pre-COVID was brutal enough. And it's going to be even more brutal and harsher coming out. That's just the cold, hard facts, as they say. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people who have lost their jobs and I hear from a lot of them in the marketing services industry who just to get back in the job market are going to be willing to take a lesser job with lesser responsibility to less pay than they typically would based on the fact that it's going to be a limited number of jobs. It's what we call a buyer's market for talent. Um, and, and, and particularly in marketing services, it's an industry sports, live events that everybody wants to be in. Uh, budgets are going to be tough to come back for. And when we say budgets, we're talking about if there's no professional baseball, there's no, you know, we've got a great Mike Plant, uh, the president of Atlanta Braves is, uh, is, is on an upcoming podcast. But if there's no baseball, there's no opportunities for you to go out and work and run hospitality and run the suites and run the social media and things of that nature. So my goal is to equip you with uh, all these tremendous tools. But um, let's talk about if and when you do get back to school, my son Carter is a fresh, is a rising sophomore at University of Georgia, and I know he is like many of you. He wants to go back to campus. He loves the campus. He loves the interaction with students. He loves the interaction in the classroom. He loves uh, the interaction um, with his professors and 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 the socialization and and the football games and, and all that. That's really what the college experience is about. Um, I know that learning online is a less desirable experience, even as today we're trying to keep you engaged and get you to learn online. And so when you go back, I want you to start looking at the college campus through a new, different and unique lens. It is uh, the ultimate professional laboratory. And uh, we're going to talk a lot today about that. And I'll use myself as an example of what I mean by that. And so you're going to hear from the athletic directors. So let's assume that you want to be in sports marketing. Chances are uh, you're dialing in here, you're tuning in here, you're going through the podcast, you're going through the lunch and learns, you're going to read the book and those types of things. So 
um, I want to give you a, so we'll use the athletic department um, as the lens of which we'll speak to today. So as I told you, when I got to Auburn, it was a great big place, biggest place I'd ever been. I uh, really didn't find my, my, my footing, didn't find my grip, didn't find my space. Many of you are like that. I hear from many of you are like that as well. It's a giant first time in life transition. You've been at home for 18 years. You've been in somewhat of a bubble and then all of a sudden you're dropped into this giant place with all these people from all over the world there. And so uh, it's not uncommon for you not to find your footing. But what you do have is that, you, first of all, each one of you um, do have a passion. And so for myself, when I got to Auburn, I had a, a passion for sports. I love to play it and watch it. It wasn't very good, but I love to watch it. I was very good at watching it. And I love to write about it. And so for my local newspaper, I'd write stories and I'd write letters to my heroes and those types of things. And I got very, very fortunate that the Sports Information Director at the time, as you've heard, David Housel was teaching the class. He talked about the athletic department and um, the sideline, the locker room. And I said, man, that's the place I got to be. So I went in there and took that shot. We talk about a lot about taking that shot. How dramatically different would my life have been um, had I not uh, taken that shot? So let's use the athletic department. Uh, first of all, you need to do the research of who all the leaders are um, in the athletic department. So as we talked about now, the athletic department is a $100 million organization. So this AD is basically the CEO of a 50 to 100 to 150 million or, or dollar organization. Greg McGarity is the CEO of a $125 million organization at the University of Georgia. So within that, you then have to begin identifying the department heads that report up into him, okay? So what do I mean by that? So a ticket office drives a ton of revenue within an athletic department. The tickets they sell to um, football games and basketball games and women's softball games and those types of things. And so that is a really good place. And, and by the way, you don't necessarily have to have a journalism degree or even a sports degree, uh, business, accounting, bookkeeping, uh, but now the season ticket office and the ticket office is not only collecting money from the tickets, it's become a great center for data analytics. So if you're looking at pursuing um, a job in data analytics and examining who that person is that's buying that season ticket, what's their background, what's their household income, what car do they drive, what beverages do they drink, how much money have they given to the university, when do they graduate, those types of things. And so it's, if you've got 40, 50, 60,000 season ticket holders, that's a giant opportunity to be in the, uh, uh, in the ticket office. And so think about that, even if you're not a, 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 a liberal arts or PR or journalism or sports, the ticket office is a, a tremendous financial laboratory and they contribute millions of dollars to the revenue of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the athletic department. As we've talked about sponsorships, you're going to hear from some great sponsor people. You've heard from great sponsor people, Kyle Sherman, Ben Sutton. A lot of times the sponsorship marketing of a university is outsourced to a Fox. Uh, there's another one you should look out called JMI. Um, there is the big one, IMG Learfield. So at Georgia, for instance, there's a third party IMG that actually they outsource the sponsorship, the radio broadcast, those opportunities too. So that's a whole nother group of people within a whole different group of company. At Auburn, for instance, Kyle Sherman and the Fox organization, Courtney Sherman, his daughter was a, and we'll talk about her and feature her. She's a great graduate of Mel University from LSU. Uh, so the sponsorship office is another extension because those sponsorships and those revenues, when you go into the stadium, you see the Coca-Cola signs or you hear the Coke ad on the, on the radio broadcast and those types of things. That's another big one. Um, content and video. And that you can break this down a couple of ways. The, 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 the sports teams in themselves need video crews. Then there are video crews such as the SEC Network who are filming and streaming all of these games in some platform or format. So that's another the bucket as well. And now obviously the social media department 
um, is, is, is becoming big. And as we're going to talk about, and you're going to hear about later on down the line, name, image, and likeness, whether it's working with the athletic department uh, to help those uh, athletes or whether it's actually you start your own business and you help those athletes build their audience, build their following, uh, and build their base of which they can generate revenue once this, the, the laws pass in, in 2021, which, by the way, is in six months. Uh, this year is half over. It's crazy. So then there's a different department that does nothing but puts the events on. So you don't think about all the moving parts that go into when you walk into a football stadium or softball stadium or a volleyball court or a basketball court. There's a whole group of people that are making sure that thing is flowing really, really well. They're overseeing the concessions, the ticket takers, the security, um, the restrooms, the you know ingress and egress and, and those types of things. And you can get valuable, very valuable event management and venue experience uh, in the game day and venues management uh, office because there's hundreds, obviously hundreds of um, uh, 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 events going on every year just in sports. As we said, then actual the game day operations. We've talked about social media, uh, uh, tutoring. There are a lot of services and I know a lot of, of, uh, of kids that, that, that work in not only tutoring, you know, uh, normal college students, regular college students, but student athletes as well. Uh, the recruiting operation is a full-time year-round operation. Um, 21, I think 21, 23 sports university of Georgia. They each have their own recruiting function. Some are staff bigger than others. Obviously football will be bigger than say the golf team or whatever. Uh, but that's a great area. Um, and I know tons of people who've worked and volunteered in those as well. And then just the day-to-day -day operations of the athletic department as well. If you got a hundred million dollar organization, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of, a lot of operations. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, I've never heard of an instance where a kid went to an athletic department and wanted to volunteer and got denied. So it's, it's wide open. We've talked about sports information. PR is huge. And, th and then um, uh, Ross Bjork and McGarity pointed out some new areas that I have, had not even actually thought about. Compliance within the NCA rule system uh, has always been big. But once this name, image, and likeness gets passed, the compliance function, and that may be business affairs you're studying or legal or pre-law, the compliance area is huge. Um, an area that is growing um, and I had not thought about is the mental health area. And, you know, we're all under a lot of pressure. The society's under pressure, a ton uh, of anxiety out there. So uh, if you're studying to be a, a mental health professional, uh, that area of the athletic department uh, is going to be rising as well. And then, like I said, continue to read in all of these publications, I hope you're following now uh, about the rise of name, image, and likeness, because I'm a big proponent of it, because I think not only the star players, but I think, uh, the athletes who are working just as hard, I always use the Auburn women's equestrian team, but um, I think there's gonna be tremendous opportunities uh, it, like that as well. And, and I want you to look around you in that college environment because you're never going to be in an environment of opportunity that you're in right now. And so I'm using sports as a metaphor, but there are events on campus every day. There are organizing career fair days. There are a ton of calls and community marketing. I know the big dance-a-thon um, is, a, is a great area as well. So whatever your passion is, think about if it's Greek life, if it's student government, it's a club because you're networking, you're learning, and I call it padding your resume, but you're building your resume, you're building your brand. So when I see that resume, I know you're a great student, I know you've been to a great school, but I want to see what you've done and are doing in that environment, because as we've talked about, these resumes are like blind dates. These job interviews, every interaction you're having with a potential employer is an audition because they're going to invest time, money and effort and resources into you. They're going to want to know how you are as a as, a, as an employee. Excuse me. So every interaction is couched as an audition. Please don't forget that. As I tell you, when I get these resumes where they say, hey, I'm 
Joe Smith and here's my resume and I need to make X amount of dollars. And it's sent to the generic website, total automatic flush. I want to know, I want I want you to show me that you've done the research on the organization, you've done the research on the CEO or your target. The information's there. We've talked about uh, LinkedIn, how you've positioned your brand on that campus, how you've shown yourself starting, how you've shown initiative, all those types of things that are laddering up to put you in that five percentile to, to then you get in that five percentile, that putt is going to drop. So whatever it is within this beautiful environment of the college campus, um, you're never going to be in that again. As I said, it's the ultimate lab. Identify your passion and work like crazy against that. And so um, you'll laugh about this, but in the old days, I was in a fraternity, it was a great fraternity, and I had a lot of fun at school, but there was not the technology in the sports information department that there is now. It wasn't a click of a button. Um, there were barely any computers. There were no fax machines. I mean, yes, I'm dating myself and all that, but, but again, I put the time in. I wanted to leave that press box many times right after the game had, had, had ended and gone back to the Fiji house, but I had to put that time in. I had to make sure all those reporters had everything that they needed before they wrapped their story and filed those stories. I had to make sure they got back to the hotel safely uh, because those guys were putting in 12 hour days. And so find the passion, put the time in, whatever it is, any activity that you're, um, that you're, you're showing some self-starting and self-initiative in. Because as I said, even if you're a waiter or a waitress or a coffee server or a barista and you're working your way through school, positioning yourself in that brand by saying, I'm on the front lines of consumer service, customer service, consumer behavior, consumer activity, serving over 100 people per day. So think about that little change. You could have a line in the resume that says, I was a server at X coffee house, or I was on the front lines of consumer behavior serving hundreds of, of patrons per day. Think about that little positioning, you know, these little tweaks that we're gonna teach you about um, uh, as, we, as we continue to build brand new. Whatever your interest might be, we use the athletic department today but examine where those opportunities lie. Also on the campus, we've got uh, uh, the eSports space. To identify those clubs. That's gonna be a giant career op area. There's usually a campus radio station. There are, uh, there's usually a campus television station. Now on SEC schools and ACC schools, there are, uh, and I think Big 10 and Pac-12, there's, there's television stations broadcast uh, devoted to those networks and then there's usually a university broadcast area um, as well there's concerts there's festivals there's gatherings there's speakers stay informed and there's campus newspapers stay informed and attuned to who's coming there get that business card get those handwritten note cards and go start building the network. One of the greatest things that I love to do when I do go speak at a university, and I would love to come to every one of your schools this fall, is uh, I, love the, I love the kids who wait after class if they can, if they're not changing classes. They stand in line, they, they come shake my hand, they look me in the eye, they have a great question for me, they want my business card. They want to know how to reach me on LinkedIn. A lot of times they'll give me their resumes. Uh, those are the kind of things I love. That's extra effort. They identified I was going to be in that class. And sometimes even I'm speaking to a class, even if it's not a class they're in, they will ask permission to come in that. So as we've talked about, tons of student services. I mean, you guys are in a micro city within a campus, you know, Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, 10, 20, 30,000 people within that. So it's a city within itself, whether it's health services or student services or whether it's the, the, uh, the food service, you know, uh, operations, campus-based service, political organizations. If you are, you care about a cause, anything that you're doing to show, um, show that you really, really, really kind of care. And, 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 and if you have a certain passion for that, well, and if it's a cause, let's say it was the dance -a for juvenile diabetes, like not only were you raising money for a great cause, you're networking within um, 
the, uh, the, the, the JD organization, which is a tremendous organization, uh, you're fundraising, you're reaching out to your friends and your family to do that. You're using social media. That is a great case study of really, really uh, well-rounded resume effort because you're, and if you, if you just think about the story I just told you on brand new, fundraising, great cause, great national organization, networking, friends, family, and parents, uh, the power of social media, and the actual event itself, all based on a really, really good cause. And so, um, and then within the, 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 the college towns, college towns are the greatest place in America as well. So if there are merchants there and, and you need to work or there's university bookstores or all those types of things, anything that you can do to build and pad that resume and that portfolio, I, I've, I've told you the story and I'll continue to tell the story that I was able to gain a lot of writing experience at the athletic department, sports information department and the stu student newspaper, the Auburn Plainsman. So when I came out of school, I had a portfolio about that thick of a couple hundred articles. And so, um, so I knew I was in that five percentile and I knew it was a numbers game and I knew I had to put dozens of resumes out there and I knew I had to network. We had to do it the old fashioned way, the old timing way back then. You got all the tools on LinkedIn now and I'm hoping that you're linking in to every one of the speakers you've heard so far on the podcast. I'm hearing that you are so great job on that because I'm hearing back from the, the folks that have been on the podcast and they're like, man, this has been so great networking with these young kids. I'm learning from these uh, young kids. I see their practice in the traits uh, that we that we talked about. So as we talked about getting noticed, building that warm lead, building that relationship, not just, hey, I'm Joe Smith. Here's my resume. I need to make a dollar. No, 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 no. Reach out to these folks on LinkedIn. Show you've done your homework. Show you've listened to that podcast. Tell an anecdote within the podcast, which actually proves you did listen to that podcast. So, for instance, Mr. Cottrell, I really enjoyed your story about being at Converse building the Rubber Tracks recording studio. He's going to notice that. He's going to take the bait. And even if he does it the first time, he may be testing you. I do that sometimes, too, because I want to see if you're going to come back. I want to see if you're going to be tenacious. We've, we, we use the word be relentless over and over and over and over again. But but. Don't forget, these people were just like you one day. They want to help you. They want to connect you. I'm using a guy like Jeff Cottrell as an example, but, you know, this guy's been at the highest levels, highest relationships, highest networks, highest level of advice. He really, really wants to help you. And so if you want to examine careers in music, careers in marketing, we talk about brand management, how brand management is a misnomer. It's not just managing the brand, it's managing a, 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 a brand within a brand, a company within a company, a, a, a p and We're going to hear about that from the Seth Freemans, from the Jeff Cottrells, from the Tia Cummings um, as well. And so, so these are all the tricks of the trade that, that I'm trying to teach you. But I want you to be thinking right now and get in a different mindset when you go back to your college or your campus view it as that ultimate professional lab. Begin doing that research now. Begin making a list of those areas now. Begin researching who those people are in those areas. As I said, the University of Georgia is a hundred million dollar organization. It may have a term called athletic department. It's a giant company. So know who those people are begin to network with them, research them, LinkedIn, and those types of things. So we're all going to be back at school. We're all going to be at campus one day. And these opportunities are going to be uh, uh, out there for you uh, to get noticed. And so um, we'll tease up chapter three uh, just a little bit. But as I talked about, showing the signs that you're a self-starter, showing the signs that you have initiative, showing that you have that willpower uh, to build that resume, to make that effort to network, please get a business card. Get your email on there, your cell phone. You never know when you're gonna get it in the hands of the, of the right person. Craig Silver's on your campus producing an SEC game of the week. Business card is invaluable. Um, and if you can get their information, if you can exchange business cards, or if not say, you know, Mr. Silver, 
Miss Silver, um, would you please send me your email so I can correspond with you? I'd like you to send, I'd like to send you my resume, those types of things. You're beginning the relationship building process. You're beginning the follow-up process. You're beginning the networking process. You're beginning the audition process. You are showing that person, it's an audition, who you are you know, and thank you. And I'm going to follow up and I'm going to write that note. And I promise you, you're going to stand out. I promise you when Craig Silver comes back to say Athens or Auburn or whatever to produce another SEC, uh, CBS football game, um, you're going to, first of all, you're going to know CBS is coming there. You're going to reach out to him or he may reach back out to you. And if you reach out to him, chances are he's going to take your call and say, Hey, yeah, we need some people to set up our, um, our food stations within the uh, broadcast compound. We need to get um, we need to get you know Gary Danielson from the hotel to the site. We need to get some cables run out here. We need some spotters out here. The production of a televised sporting event is a massive undertaking. So, for instance, if you see a football game on CBS SEC, there's probably at least 22 cameras there. So then you've got then you've got people in the truck and building the graphics and all that. What an amazing experience to be able to go produce a live sporting event and put that on your resume and interact with the greatest people in the world, CBS or ESPN, um, and, 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 and things of that nature. So um, as we begin to wrap up this week, um, I want you to continue to see yourself as the brand, building brand you. All of these steps that we're, 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 we're teaching you about and the packaging uh, pick your favorite brands out, whether it's Apple or Supreme or whoever it is. Study how those brands are positioned. And it's the same approach. It's the same um, technology. Build yourself a brand lens, who you are and who you're not. We're going to talk about later building yourself a brand board. You know, the old fashioned way was to, to cut out magazines, but, but and put you know, kind of your vision, your destination on your board. Who do you want to be when you grow up? I still ask myself that question. But these are all a part of the setup of building your brand and positioning your brand and putting your brand in the position to win. You want to be in the position to win. And then when you have those great encounters uh, with these professionals that we're all connecting with through the podcast, um, you're going to be in a position to win. And at some point, the virus will pass, the jobs are going to come back, sports are going to come back, live events are going to come back, and you will have used this time to lay this amazing groundwork by building brand new uh, for, what do we call it, the outcome. What do we say? Life is not linear, and we are all living examples of the fact that life is not linear right now. We're, we're all living examples of the fact we're going to encounter obstacles. We're going to get fall, uh, knocked off this saddle. We're all going to get back on this saddle together. And so coming out of this eight-week course, which, I, like I said, I'm, I'm so grateful um, that you guys are participating. Um, we hope that your brand is going to be positioned to win that first job. Let's go to some Q&As. Harrison Smith, great points you're making. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, feel free to submit questions and chats and all that. Do you have any advice for those of us that have already graduated within the past year and are having a tough time finding and landing that first postgraduate job? Uh, great question. And uh, here's one thing that there's a couple of things I will, I will tell you. First of all, uh, be patient. Have a lot of faith in yourself in the process. We're providing you the tools for that. Um, and as we said, even in the pre-COVID world, the intensity of the competition for entry-level jobs in this space is, is tremendous. So um, you got to look at it. I use this analogy of, you know, of fishing because I, I grew up fishing with my father a lot. But you've got to make 100 cast or 100 job inquiries to get maybe eight responses to get maybe two opportunities to, to, to land that. So do all of your research on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, as we said, the greatest tool there ever is. Um, be fearless, be relentless, um, you know, not to the point where you're, you're irritating somebody, but you know, all of these podcasters that you're in, you can say, hey, you know, Mr. Cottrell, I really enjoyed your, your podcast. Those little nuggets, 
may I get 15 minutes of your time? Can we talk on the phone? Can we do a Zoom? Will you please critique my resume? I love advice. And then when you're networking, it's almost like what we call the pyramid uh, networking. Out of that interaction with, say, Jeff Cottrell or Craig Silver, whoever it is, Tracy Wolfson, get two or three more connections where you can continue to build that loop. So if you say, hey, Tracy, who's the best person to contact at, at, um, at CBS for this job? And she can say, so-and-so and tell them to, that I told you their name. I actually, Julia Sprague, who was a 2018 uh, Melt U graduate of Georgia, uh, equestrian national champion. She actually did that this week. She called me and she said, I'm applying for a sales coordinator job at CBS Viacom. I'm having problems knocking the door down. Do you have any good relationships with CBS? Well, yeah, I happen to have a few. And I, I said, send me a nice email with your resume describe your background, describe the position, show the link to position, and then I'll copy you in on these senior executives at CBS. Well, guess what? She's in the job consideration set. She's on the radar. And not only for that job, but for other jobs within CBS Viacom. So, so just, just pound it because, hey, I'm doing the same thing you're doing at a different level. You know, we're, our business is all over the board right now. There's no live events and there's no live sporting events. So I'm doing sort of the same thing that you're doing. But the main thing is to, is to keep that, that faith and, and keep that personalized touch and interaction. And, the, and then Julia, and we'll use her as a you know, teaching example later on, um, is, a, is a great example of that. Grayson Wyndham, currently working with the promotions department for UGA. I've thought about getting experience in other departments while still working in promotions, but fear that I may spread myself too thin. Could you speak to this? Um, great question. I, well, first of all, I'm always a proponent of gaining as much experience as you can, um, but you do not want to spread yourself too thin. So you've got to decide do you want to go very vertical and very deep in promotions or go sit down with the head of promotions. Uh, it may be Alan Thomas or, or, or I've got some good friends over there, but sit down and seek the advice of the promotions director and say, hey, I love promotions. I love working with you. Here's the things I'm learning, but I have an interest in compliance or because of NIL, or I have an interest in, in mental health and those types of things uh, and seek their advice. And they'll tell you from the heart, like, well, I'm not really comfortable with that or don't spread yourself too thin or yeah, let's work out a job share program where you're working here 10 hours and, and, and there 10 hours. But uh, again, take the shot because you never know until you ask. And so you certainly will get the answer uh, to the question in that. So I hope that helped. John Trowig, um, with the MLB finally granted 60 game season last night, do you see do you see any opportunities to have events in or right outside the battery since no fans are going to be allowed in Truist Park? If so, what events could you possibly put on given the current guidelines, regulations, circumstances, the state of Georgia? Um, okay, two things, John. Uh, we've got an upcoming podcast with Mike Plant. Look Mike Plant up. CEO of the Atlanta Braves, great friend of mine, former Olympic skater, ran the Goodwill Games at Turner. This guy's a gold mine of contacts, networks, and relationships with Olympics, Turner, and the Braves. He talked about the success of the battery. He talked about fans returning. I believe they're going to do some things out on the concourse and all those types of things, uh, show the games on the big screen, do some interactive activities and those types of things. And so I would reach out to Mike Plant, P-L-A-N-T, um, and then David Dickey, a uh, very good friend of mine, we need to have him on, uh, owns 680 The Fan. Here's another area, the voice of the Braves. 680 The Fan, tremendous opportunities there. And Mike sort of indicated yesterday that if things continue on a positive path, they may ultimately uh, get fans back in the stands. But nevertheless, go seek that opportunity out to, to get that networking in, get that relationship in, get that experience in, Get that brand, that storyline uh, on your resume because what you did point out is baseball's coming back. There are going to be some opportunities. So great question to say, okay, if they're not in the stadium in Truist Park, are they going to be on the fans going to be on the outside and where can I participate in that? Because you can believe the Braves are going to want to make that experience just as good as the in-stadium experience because one day the fans will be back in the stadium, uh, hopefully. Um, Serena Holmes, I've noticed you said you visit a lot of college. Any chance you could visit Georgia College and State University? They have a great business department. I believe you can inspire and help the students. Hey, sign me up, Serena. Um, 
get me in touch with your professors and bite me down. It's my favorite, uh, or, you know, I'll go speak to big classes or the whole department or whatever you want me to do. It's literally my favorite thing to do because I am still you and I was once you and I still am you. And so it's my passion to, because I'm, I'm, I'm still just the boy from Chatham, Alabama, population 800, one red light. And if I can reach one Serena Holmes in my visits, then uh, my job is, is, is accomplished and uh, fulfilled. And I, and I love to do it. So all of you who are participating in the program, uh, if and when we all go back to school, I would, uh, I would love to, uh, to come visit you. I would love to come uh, share my experiences with you. I'd love to come inspire you. I'd love to come teach. So um, anything that, that you want us to do, you want me to do, um, when we all get back to school, I'd love to join you back in the school as well. But, but I can't believe we're moving into week three. Time is flying by, but I can tell you, I have not had this much fun in a long time um, teaching you, learning with you, learning about you, uh, seeing you inspired online, seeing you share these things online. Um, it's, 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 you know, you can tell my enthusiasm for this and, and, and really, really interacting with a lot of you uh, online as well. So I'm here to help. And, and, and just think about this. You didn't think about this a few weeks ago, but you're actually going to come out of this summer with a great headline in your resume, participating in Melt University. And we're going to put almost 50 podcasts out there. Uh, you're going to have this book that's going to give you all the tricks of the trade and the tools as well. So um, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I, uh, as I am. And so got a great, great slate of uh, a lineup of podcasts and speakers coming up. I listen them out for you. We'll continue to put them out there. If you've got others that you would like to suggest or you have relationships um, with others that we, we might want to try to put on, please feel free to send those in. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we would love to have, you know, we would love to have as many people as we can get on to help influence, inform, and inspire you. So I can't believe we're wrapping up week three of Melt University, week three of these Lunch and Learns. I uh, hope you got some good tidbits and nuggets today. Uh, but uh, summer, Melt University, virtual Melt University, 2020, we are rolling on and we'll hear from you and see you tomorrow with the podcast. But I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, CEO of Melton University, and thank you for tuning in to this week's Melton University Lunch and Learn. <laughs>